Welcome to Maximal Being, a podcast devoted to ditching fad diets and using real science to get you healthy and feeling great. I'm Doc Mock, a GI and functional medicine doctor who harnesses the power of gut health to get you achieving your goal. And I'm Jackie P, a well-informed layman who challenges the experts and asks the questions that you want. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button or leave a comment. And now, on to the show. What is lauric acid, right? I think we got into a little bit of the benefits and research, but let's uh, let's go back to one oh, you know, monolaurin one hundred and one. Can you tell the folks, especially me, what is monolaurin, also known as lauric acid? Lauric acid is a medium chain fatty acid. It's a twelve carbon atom chain uh, triglyceride, and and it's found really in three principal places. Um, it's found naturally in, in actually human breast milk. Um, so human breast milk constitutes around 6.2% uh, lauric acid, which is you know, further converted into the body and into monolaurin. And then it's found in, in plant sources like uh, palm kernel oil, it's around 48 to 49% of palm kernel oil, and then 50% of, of coconut oil. So um, naturally, you can get um, access to lauric acid through, through diet, right? Um, eating coconut flesh, uh, consuming coconut oil. Um, but it's not always the most pleasant way to go about it. Um, monolaurin is standardized, right? And, uh, and when you get it from a food source, um, the, the conversion between lauric acid in the food source and monolaurin in the body is, is unknown. It can be estimated, but it's not, not currently known. And so by our calculations, you would have to consume around six and a half teaspoons of coconut oil to equivalent one 600 milligram uh, capsule of monolaurin. And uh, for, you know, for the average dose, which may mean two capsules with breakfast, two capsules with lunch, two capsules with dinner, that's around uh, almost a cup. It's 0.81 cups of, of coconut oil. And for some people that may not be the most pleasant or, or may not be the most, um, I don't know, oh. rational thing to do. Yeah. So I see we have Doc Mock back, so I'll hand it back over to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, I mean, I think lauric acid or medium chain triglycerides compose a lot of our tissues in our body. We talked about, you know, what, what sort of things they come from. Uh, you mentioned coconuts, but they also come from colostrum or kind of uh, breast milk sources, which we, we definitely are advocates for colostrum for gut health with, without a doubt um, and the numerous other compounds within it. But, you know, in the literature that I've come across, you know, there's some implications in neurologic health. There's some implications in uh, inflammation benefit in um, benefiting our cholesterol. Um, I've even seen animal data on fat loss. I, I did not see human data, but definitely an animal data on that. So I, I think that there's just a lot of potential there. And then you mentioned cosmetics. You know, we we found some papers on uh, psoriasis treatment with you know compounds that integrate uh, lauric acid into their you know lotions and creams. So yeah, I think anything in your body that contains fat, there's some potential for this substance to have an impact. It's fascinating you you, you touch on that. So maybe this, this happened when when you were signing back on, but uh, monolaurin was was first, or lauric acid, I should say, was first isolated in, in human breast milk in the 1960s, and that's sort of what spawned this sort of generation of of interesting studies. And regarding animal studies, there are several animal studies that. Uh, support the recommendation of feeding um, uh, cows, for example, uh, monolaurin to help uh, suppress the production of uh, greenhouse gas causing methane um, oh. to helping support the overall health of the digestive tract of, of farm animals, including, um, you, know, you know, bovine and porcine uh, animals. And uh, there are a lot of really, really fascinating animal studies, all which can be found on PubMed. Uh, all which have uh, some really interesting, uh, I don't know, takeaways. I always wondered, and this might not be related, but I think just for for me to know as a layman, who directs this research? Right? We 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 we, we, we <laughs> stumble upon them on a learn, right? We say, okay, this lauric acid might have some some benefits. Okay, um, who is the guy or gal who says, let's give this to cows, right? Like how, how does it go from, we, we isolate this um, to, okay, how do, how do we know which applications, which 
avenues to go down to see how it's going to benefit people and society in general. I guess I, I don't know who that was directed toward, actually. I guess Doc Mock, who, who wants to take it away, I guess? <laughs> Do you want to lead off and maybe I'll, I'll come in at the tail end? Happy to. Yeah, this is great. Um, no, there are a lot of motivations to, to support and, and sort of inspire these studies, some of them being you know, financially motivated. Uh, for example, one of you know, these, uh, these studies from farm animals are they're trying to help prevent abdominal and pelvic infections in, in farm animals and to, to give uh, medicine to a herd of a thousand cows is, is, a, is a pretty big economic feat. And so what are some natural alternatives that may exist to help you know, integrate into uh, animal feed to help support the overall you know, health of, of an animal? So a lot of it is driven by uh, you know, financial motivation or economic motivations, you know, others by um, purely based on like scientific method, right? So when you take this, this oath, this pledge to do no harm, you know, you want to encourage uh, studies that, that support exactly that. And the, so the further pursuit of, of how um, some substances can support and maintain uh, immune health without causing harm is, is really critical. And uh, one of the several of the studies that, that you can find on PubMed go on to suggest that, um, you know, unlike other traditional forms of, 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 uh, of medicine, like antibiotics, for example, um, some natural products like, like monolaurin do not contribute to uh, antibiotic resistance in, in the test subjects, which is really critical when you're using it over and over again in, in large uh, like sample sets. So uh, there are several reasons to pursue research uh, from an economic and, and also an overall well being uh, sense. Yeah, I, I think from my perspective, you know, usually it's somebody with, you know, those of you that have taken biology, chemistry, organic chemistry in high school, you know, have followed the scientific method, right? So you have to formulate a hypothesis of some sort, which is usually based upon your understanding of the literature. And then you want to either prove or refute that hypothesis based upon background data. So that's where PubMed comes into play. You do a search, you make it exhaustive, you see if that question's already been answered. Has it been answered in an appropriate way? Can you do something that's better? And then you design your experiment around that. So usually it's a nerdy guy like me, you know, who's who's doing doing something clinically or, you know, a, I guess, you know, a veterinarian and has a question and sees some area where there can be some improvement. Um, you know, we use a lot of these sort of things to fight infections. Lor lauric acid is, is a great one. Um, oregano and thyme, I think, are also great antimicrobials that we can use for people, say, with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And randomized data were performed back, you know, I think 2012 were the studies where they looked at, you know, antifungal therapy for CFO with or without these these medicinal herbs and with the herbs did better than just antifungal therapy alone, actually. Pretty interesting stuff. But we're gonna go to a brief commercial break uh, for all those uh, people listening out there. Um, you know, Stay tuned, because we're um, putting Damon in the hot seat after we get back from this commercial break. What's going on, Maximal Beings? It's Doc Mock here. Many of you are returning to the gym now, but some are not going back. Regardless of what you plan, Rogue has got the right gear to fit your needs. I personally own a barbell set and love it. The black op shorts are sweat resistant and flexible for getting deep in your squats. Head on over to maximalbeing.com slash rogue for our referral link. Order three items and they ship for free. And as usual, it's Doc Mock and I'm here to maximize your pathway to wellness. If you're stuck at home and cannot make it to the grocery store, Delivery may be the best way to stay clean and healthy. Instacart is the national leader in the direct-to-home delivery service. With numerous major chains and food from smaller stores, you can get those local veggies sent directly to your doorstep. Head on over to MaximalBean.com slash Instacart and maximize your nutrition today. Hello, Maximal Beans. Thank you for waiting for us to come back. We have Damon, not going to try his last name here. Talking to us about monolaurin, aka lauric acid. 
So Damon's in the hot seat. We've got three questions coming to him and maybe four or five, depending if anything comes to mind. You all know how my brain works uh, or how it doesn't work, actually, for the most part, sometimes. <laughs> but all right, let's 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 go for the easy stuff, Damon. You know, let's go for low hanging fruit. Uh, what would you say is your favorite health book? I wouldn't call it a health book necessarily, but I did get a lot out of um, Timothy Ferris's uh, series uh, that started with the four hour chef. Or sorry, actually started with a four hour work week. Yeah. And I think went to the four hour body and then the four hour chef. And I just loved his approach to deconstructing complex problems and breaking them down into smaller sort of bite-sized pieces and rearranging them in a, in a more accessible and maybe logical way. And so he talks about you know, a lot of ways to, uh, I don't know, modify body mass, lose weight, bulk up. It's, it's fascinating his approach to, um, uh, to life in general, but just problem solving and, and deconstructing problems. And I wouldn't call it, again, I wouldn't call it a health book, but uh, he, he, he borrows a lot of fascinating concepts and, and makes it uh, very easy for the layman, if you will. Yeah, nice. Crystal, Crystal Axelon, shout out to her, who's probably editing this podcast right now. Uh, you know, definitely found her through the four hour work week. So thanks, Tim Ferriss. Appreciate that. And thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah, Crystal has to deal with us all the time. She, yeah, <laughs> it's tough. I never reply to emails or reply to the wrong person or just her. So, Crystal, <laughs> you're the real MVP here. Uh -huh. um, great. Okay. So, good answer. And I say that's, you know, it's a health book, right? Health. Yeah. Health is not just, you know, the the diet, right? It's about everything contributes to your health, right? So right. Um, that's an acceptable answer and a, a very lovely answer. And also you got the Doc Mock's silent nod of approval where <laughs> when, when someone says something, he, he's like, yep, mm -hmm, that's a good one. He read it. Amen. Stamp approval. <laughs> Boom. Church. Yeah. All right. Uh, second question. Um, what is your favorite exercise? You know, I I wouldn't call it a, a favorite, but one that I was, I was thrust into thanks to the pandemic was actually climbing stairs. Like I, I really learned to, to embrace it. So uh, I live in a building that has uh, 14 floors above ground and then four floors below ground. And, uh, you know, during the pandemic when, you know, the gym had closed and I had sort of exhausted myself from, from running outside, I thought, you know, stairs could be could be an interesting change up to my workout routine. And I, I really, I learned to enjoy it actually. Uh, it's less stress on the knees. Um, when I come back from a long run, I, I sometimes, you know, I definitely feel it the next day. And, uh, you know, stairs can be uh, almost therapeutic in nature because it's, although it's very monotonous, you have to focus on the steps and getting your balance just right and, and not overextending, you know, your knee or your, your ankle or anything. And, uh, you know, with a, with a good podcast, you can get through quite a few flights. Oh, a little subtle plug, a good podcast. I wonder if there's a podcast out there that has enlightening <laughs> hosts, great guests, and, you know, small digestible bits that you can listen to while you're apparently punishing yourself and running up and down 18 <laughs> flights of stairs <laughs> and it's neat right we always talk about yeah. neat steps are ultimate exactly neat, for sure yep for those of you who if you can't tell if you're watching i'm at a standing desk right now and it's changed my life lower back pain minimized it's not gone but definitely mitigated uh all right cool cool all right uh next question um what is the craziest diet that you've been on or heard of i wouldn't call it crazy i would call it different um it's something that i i i hadn't heard of or, or seriously considered until i actually implemented it but it's something called flexitarianism I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this before but i was in a i was in an office kitchen or like a you know, the canteen like the uh the office meal hall and they had this big sign up that said, like, have you ever considered flexitarianism? And I thought, or have you ever considered being a flexitarian? I thought, that's strange. Like, I wonder if that word is, is made up, right? And uh, a short Google uh, search uh, educated me that, no, it actually exists. It's when you make the conscious choice to not eat meat a few days a week. So you can choose one day, three days, five days. It's totally up to you. And you sort of default to the, the vegetarian option. 
But when it's more convenient or when you feel like it, you can have the meat option. So for example, if you're at a, I don't know, a fancy steakhouse for a work meal and you don't want to be like that person ordering a salad mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, you can choose the meat option, right? So uh, recently, again, during the pandemic, when we were at home cooking a lot, uh, ourselves, my wife and I, we made the conscious choice. Look, Monday through Thursday, we'll, we'll eat veggie. We'll have a vegan or vegetarian options um, you know, during the day. And then uh, on the weekends, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll have whatever we like. You know, if it contains meat, great, no problem. If it doesn't, then also no problem. But uh, we feel great. You know, we, we feel that you know, being able to have that flexibility uh, to you know, eat meat when you, when you like, but you know, sort of gravitate naturally towards the, the, the veggie options. Uh, we have more energy. We, you know, we just we feel uh, just a, a lot more uh, balanced, I guess, throughout the week. And it's, it's, we haven't sacrificed anything because of it, right? No one's telling us, oh, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. Well, you can. You just, you know, if you eat it on a Tuesday, well, maybe you skip it on a Saturday and it doesn't matter. So we, we love the, the concept, the flexibility, some of the, the health uh, I don't know, outcomes that we're personally experiencing from it. And also there's, you know, some associated environmental benefits of reducing, uh, you know, meat consumption. So we love it. And not, and, not strange, but something we can encourage. And economic benefit these days. I mean, I, be, it was a two week span for like food shopping from one place to another. And the cost of like ground chicken went up a dollar a pound. I was like, what is happening? It's crazy. That's yeah. I've actually, I, I, I had a recent journey to a wholesale club in which I will not say the name. Uh, and I was looking at the chicken breasts cause, uh, it's grilling season here in Philly. We don't have sunshine year round like down there in the oasis land of Tampa. Uh, but I was, I, I, if I had pearls on, I would have clutched my pearls. I was like, this is not like, is this, is this royal chicken? Was this like, was each individual chicken massaged and named and put in a massage chair? I was like, what is happening? Uh, but yeah, and also I like, flexitarianism just sounds like no stress no pressure i think um you know here at maximum beam right we always promote like hey if you're gonna implement something if it's right for you right make it sustainable and i think like flexitarianism just sounds like something like hey like if you make the decision to enjoy that steak right or that lobster or chicken whatever it is today all right cool you know what skip it tomorrow or the next day so you know what i like that i think i might i might you know I might dabble in flexitarianism, especially after seeing the price of that chicken. I was, <laughs> I was aghast. I literally verbally gasped when I saw the price. Yeah. Uh, and I think the, people. I think the omnivore concept we've talked about a lot, right? Just our, our digestive tracts are, are omnivorous. They're not carnivorous. They're not herbivores. <clears throat> we don't, we're not ruminant animals. We don't have multiple stomachs. We don't have the pH of a monogastric, like we're somewhere in between. So like eating a lot of different things is the way that we were designed to exist in my opinion. So for what it's worth, paleo, keto, vegan, and carnivore. Maybe you've tried them all, but did you have success? Are you still doing that diet? Turns out there's not just one diet right for one particular person. By understanding how your body works and the relationship behind your body's workings and these diets, you can then approach the perfect plan for you. In the Perfect Human Diet course, we talk to you about your body's inner workings and the pros and cons of each plan. We discuss how our ancestors ate and have eaten and lay a framework to tailoring a plan that is perfect for you. To learn more about the Perfect Human Diet course, head to MaximalBeing.com slash courses to find out more. And as always, I'm Doc Mock, and I'm here to maximize your health. You cannot supplement your way to health, but there are things that we need to add to our lives that can maximize our pathway to wellness. The American diet is virtually devoid of omega-3 fatty acids, which play a major role in cardiovascular disease gut permeability, and mental health. Personally, I take omega-3s every night and iHerb is the best place for clean, natural sources of supplements. I love the ZenWise Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplement, which is free of fish burps 
and good for the environment. Head on over to MaximalBeing.com slash iHerb, that's I-H-E-R-B, and enter the code B as in boy, D as in dog, B as in boy, 5528, and receive 10% off your orders for all supplements. Maximize your supplements with iHerb. I got a question for you as well, Damon. This is unrelated. So you've been to 70 countries in six continents. All right. Um, And since we're talking about food and diet, I'm sure you have, there there was a meal there that I I don't want to say is strange because there's no such thing as strange, but perhaps for those of us in the United States of A, you would say is uncommon. You probably wouldn't see here in the States. You have any experiences you want to share? Oh my gosh, so many. Yeah, no, it's um, I've had the the, the fortunate, uh, the good fortune of, of being able to travel a lot, both for personal reasons and and for work reasons. And um, I I I love it. Um, I get a lot of I got a lot of pleasure out of experiencing new cultures and foods, people, languages, etc. And so it's really really a treat for me. And uh, I've had my fair share of very strange meals. And if I may plug in one, one more use for monolaurin, it's actually great for digestion. And, and, and there are several studies that relate monolaurin and um, healthy digestion as it relates to sort of some of the things you might pick up when you're traveling and eating things that are a little bit foreign to your, your gut flora. So, uh, so look it up. There's some really cool research out there on PubMed if you look for monolaurin and, and various uh, digestive issues. But um, uh, so it's great for traveling. Um, look, in so I lived in East Asia for a while. I think I mentioned this at the top of the podcast. And uh, yeah, they they had some really interesting um, uh, dishes that incorporate uh, non-traditional seafood. <laughs> so one was <laughs> fermented stingray, which it, uh, it's like chew, like chewing on like, uh, <laughs> like ammonia-flavored cartilage. It was just really oh. not the most pleasant. Uh, wow. meal I experienced, but I, Hey, like, look, I, I, like, like you said, it's not, it's not weird or strange, just different, right? There are plenty of people who enjoy it. So I thought, great, I'll give it a shot. And another one that I remember very, very clearly, because it's wriggling around in, in my, in my plate. Uh, I don't know the, the species or genus, but the colloquial name is literally penis fish. <laughs> and uh, okay. it's served um, it wriggles around like a, like a, like an octopus tentacle on your plate. And it was served to me. I, I, I ordered it un, un, unknowing what it was until, until a friend told me what it was. And that was also quite the experience. So yeah, was, those are, those are a couple of ones that really stick, <laughs> stick and, in my mind. Yeah. Those, yeah, those will stick in my mind as well. Yep. Was it live? And that's why I was still working. Or was it like yeah, it's sort of freshly prepared. So I, I lived in Korea, right? And, and one of the delicacies in Korea, which actually it, it is strange, you could say, but but not um, it was still pleasant, I suppose, in, in some ways to eat is is live octopus. So they'll mm. they'll cut the arms of the octopus off, and they and because there's a like the the nervous system is still responding and sort of contracting the the muscle, it, it still wiggles around in your plate. It's not technically alive, I don't I don't think, but it, it was freshly prepared. Wow, fresh. That's as fresh as you can get it, folks. Uh, wow. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to say. That <laughs> like, I don't know if I can. <laughs> that's that sounds like an, an experience, and uh, you know, I've got no questions for you after that one. I think that was that. That takes the cake. I stumped you. I stumped the host. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually, usually they 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 go and they rattle off, but yeah, this you you have you currently hold the crown for a very unique dish, two dishes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, Damon, we, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. And also, folks, before I hand it over to Doc Mock, I didn't mention it, so I'm just going to say it very on the nose. Doc Mock has ginormous calf muscles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring up every podcast, and Without I didn't have board. an opportunity. Uh, I thought about it when he said the stairs, but the conversation moved away. Uh, but uh, that's it for me. I'm done with the hot seat. Doc yeah, Mock, take us away. <laughs> this, uh, this new this new workout program of yours has, <laughs> has calves like as a part of the exercise that, and I just like removed that completely. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I don't need that. You know, never once. Damon, where can people find you before we wrap up? Yeah, thanks. Um, 
like uh, Jackie said at the top, uh, Natural Cure Labs is the name of the company. We have a couple brands that that we support. One is called Palmera Health and the other Vitatails. Uh, Palmera Health is focused on human supplements and Vitatails is focused on pet supplements. So um, if you Google Natural Cure Labs or Palmera Health or Vitatails, you'll, you'll find us. Wonderful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. It does help us to get the word out. If you have any questions, email us at team at maximalbeing.com. You guys are just drinking up the kombucha course lately. It has been flying off the shelf. So thank you for supporting us. Get the word out. And if you want to make kombucha at home, purchase our kombucha course at maximalbeing.com. It has been such a pleasure, Damon. We appreciate your time. Um, and, and Jackie, I, I could not ask for a better co-host. I mean, oh, you, stop it. You make <laughs> the show. So, oh, okay. So Keep going. You. I like it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time, Maximal Beings. And uh, we are here to maximize your health. What's going on, Maximal Beings? Doc Mock here. If you haven't done so already, leave us a comment and hit the subscribe button. Let your friends and family know. That way we can get the word out and continue to bash the bro science.